gasket defects are generally easy to find since gasket leaks all occur to the outside of the unit. They are self-identifying as to location since the fluid will run down the side of the plate pack in the area of the leak onto the floor. The unit can generally be put back into service rapidly by the removal of the affected plate and the adjacent plate, either front or back, and then resealing the unit. The new tightening dimension is found from the equation provided in the I&O manual on page 28. If desired, and the unit downtime of 24 hours is not critical, the gasket can easily be replaced and the plate reinstalled in the unit. Note that only a slight decrease of performance would be experienced with the removal of two plates. This decrease, of course, would be a function of the total number of plates in the unit. Plate defects rarely occur, but when they do occur, they are generally caused by corrosion or overpressurization. The cause of the corrosion must be identified and corrected, or more generally, plate material must be changed to a higher alloy. A defective plate can be found as follows. After cleaning the unit, it must be reassembled completely dry. Corrosion typically results in cross-contamination. Disconnect both nozzles on side A so they can be looked into. Pressurize side B to approximately 50 PSIG. Any leakage can be observed by looking into the bottom nozzle on side A. Approximate location of the leak can be measured. Shut off the flow on side B and reduce the pressure to atmospheric. Open the unit and check the plates. They should be A plate dry, B plate wet. A plate dry, B plate wet, A plate, oops, we've got a wet plate. This will identify the B plate with the defect. If only one plate is defective, the unit can be returned to service rapidly by the removal of the defective plate and its adjacent plate, or the defective plate can be replaced. That's how simple it is to install, operate, and maintain a superchanger plate and frame heat exchanger.